As you've just seen with the number track applet, a neat way of showing multiplication as repeated addition is to perform the additions along a number track. The same idea works well using Cuisinaire rods. For example, supposing you want to work out the value of five twos. I can lay them end to end like this And uh, checking the answer, I can simply count the number of squares covered, which is 10, or match them against a bigger rod. If I take out this orange one, you can see that it's 10 units long. This idea of laying rods of the same colour end to end is sometimes referred to by teachers as creating trains. In this example, each red rod represents a carriage that's two units long. Are there any other ways of creating a train of the same length using carriages of another colour? I could try these pink four rods but they don't fit. What about the yellow five rods? Yes. So, two yellows give the same length as five reds. It's just a skip and a jump from here for a child to realise that five twos equal two fives. And what about comparing, say, three fours and four threes? Yes, they're equal also. Does it always work? Well, try a few examples and investigate. Now this is all very well, but when creating trains, I'm still using a model of multiplication based on repeated addition along a straight line. At some point it's important for children to think about multiplication in terms of the area of a rectangle. For example, here are five twos. But this time arranged as a 5 by 2 rectangle. Just by counting squares you can see that there are 10. What about two fives? Again there are 10 squares covered but the rectangles look different because they have a different orientation. It might help to turn them around. Whichever way round they sit, each yellow rod still covers five squares. And now it's more obvious why five twos in red and two fives in yellow give the same answer. So there are some ideas for teaching multiplication using Cuisinaire rods. I'll be using these rods again later when we look at division.